grateful uh, that we have them all here. Gentlemen, free speech. You know, it came up a few weeks ago that um, somebody said, well, we're living in a culture of silence. I, 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 from personally, I thought that the comments, when they were reported, were taken out of context. That's how I th looked at it. But uh, people took it and said, eh, the country, people can't talk. Anyway, the president himself, talking um, just at the, the weekend. On the weekend, decided to bring it up again and say, there must be an end to the abuse of Ghana's atmosphere of speech, free speech, going totally the other way. Um, well, uh, well, how did you react to that? Um, um, welcome back, and uh, honorable member, Le what do you think? Good morning, and good morning to all your listeners and viewers. Um, the president, I'll say, hit the nail right on the head. Mm. Um, there's a limit to everything. Mm. There's also a limit to free speech. Free speech in itself comes with its own responsibilities. And the power of the tongue, as we all know, is very powerful. If you let um, loose of your tongue, it can destroy nations, as we've seen in some parts of the world, including Africa, in uh, Rwanda, and not too distant past, somewhere in 1994. So free speech in itself is good because it allows people to air their views. And with di divergent views comes development because people are able to um, find solutions to problems. Because people might have solutions, but if they, they don't have the space to air their views or speak out and all that, they might not be able to express them. So for me, I am absolutely in support of free speech, that people must have the liberty to say what they want at what time, but in the right context. So if you, for example, I mean, when, when you go to the UK, when you go to the Hyde Park, we have yeah, Speaker's, speakers Corner. Corner. Mm. I visit there quite often in the summers when I find myself in Europe, just to listen to people make all kinds of debates. I mean, from religion to ethics to politics to uh, engineering, everything. So for me, that culture is good, but it must be um, with um, some safeguards, especially from the experiences that we've had in Africa. So Mr. President, what he said was, was right. Mm. He nailed it. I mean, you made allusion to some some issues that came up about four weeks ago, eight weeks ago, where people were saying that there's no free speech in Ghana. Look, there's free speech. I mean, there's freedom of expression in Ghana more than many other countries that I've visited or been to all over the world. Some of the things that people say in Ghana and get away with, you cannot say it even in Europe, even in America, even in uh, South America, all over the world, even in India, in Pakistan, you'll be, you'll be shot. In Afghanistan, we, we, the statistics is there to show. Seriously, you, Honorable, you didn't just mention Afghanistan. I mentioned well, Afghanistan. How else would I be talking at all in <laughs> Afghanistan? I'm hiding under my you bed. You can even Come look on. at Togo. Just look at Togo, <laughs> our neighbors, and uh, what uh, journalists go, go through in, in these communities. Mm. For me, anything that will gag free speech, would, um, I, would not, I would not be able to support. Right. I'll, anything that would allow people to express themselves, I wholly support. However, however underlined, Mm. that we must have safeguards. Mm. And okay. that safeguards, um, I think in, 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 in the past, we've allowed the institutions themselves, as in the institution of journalism itself, to take care of itself. And um, we repealed the criminal libel law some years ago. Um, you know, we, we, it's because of this, some of these things that people were advocating that, no, the repeal shouldn't have come in, in play, in, 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 mm. into effect. However, I was for the repeal at that time. Even though I wasn't in frontline politics, I, I followed the arguments at that time and I was for the repeal. And I think that it was a good step. Ha we should just create some reins to control um, um, control uh, um, our, our journalists and people who have the, the pen. Because the pen is, um, is always mightier than the sword. Okay, sir. And right. uh, that's what, what I believe should happen. All right. Uh, the I'm, yeah. He's ready. He's ready. I know. But I'm going to ask this well, in, in your response. Yeah, is the question that must be asked. When you politicians, stop worrying about the media, when you politicians were saying everything under the sun and calling it political beshi, <laughs> we were supposed to tolerate then when you were freeing your speech. Now it's a problem. And who's, the f who's at fault? I'm ca I'll come back to you on that no one, problem. Peter. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I realize the question is supposed to be directed to Honorable. Honorable, I'll come back to you because <laughs> we're going to go around on this again. Yes, uh, you know, um, 
so, so let me congratulate the president for i think um, um speaking on the issues of um, free speech and the press freedom and right um, some of these things are very important to our growth as uh, a democratic uh, state but i think um, what i didn't see I, I think you alluded to that um, earlier on that and uh, the president failed to discuss um, issues around politicians mm. and that of uh, looking at what the media does and what politicians does because mm -hmm. day in and day out is the position that makes the news they they create the news they decide what should be discussed in the in the media every day and um so it looks like they have that liberty to express their opinions uh, whether it's good or bad and the media is also ready to pick that up but my challenge had to do with for us to look at the individualistic of free speech and the institutional aspect of press freedom or we say um, the mass communication you know when it comes to the individualistic politicians and everyone has that opinion that liberty to express their opinion and then when it comes to institutions the institutions like the media also has that liberty to pick up some of these comments from social commentators politicians um, analysts and experts in areas of studies to also use that to communicate and educate the public but often we are interested in what should drive the the news than what should drive <laughs> should i say elemental development i mean sometimes those things are missing so you see politicians makes allegations and the media is happy about it they pick it up they make the news they, they get the traffic and then early in the morning all the media outlets especially the print media we they pick it up it becomes a top of the day so I'm worried because we have not been able to, to some extent, realize that though we have that freedom of expression, and the Constitution also guarantees the, the right to freedom of expression as well as uh, press freedom, we are always trying to ask politicians to drive the agenda for us, and I think that is what we have to look into. So the president, to some extent, failed to say, you know, you mentioned journalists, but you failed to mention politicians mm. because they, they make the news for, for the media. Mm. And the media also will do kind of, Now you have citizen journalists, journalists all over. So now there's a high competition between citizen journalists and trained journalists or the media outlets. Um, what is missing now as a country is not just about, I mean, signing off or taking out the criminal libel law or statute. Um, remember, even within the Constitution, Article 162, we still have issues of contempt, where you, when you scandalize the court, you, you, you are still not free. But I think we have to go beyond the conversation where free speech should always be guided when it is said by individuals, experts. But free speech is often, I mean, unguided by politicians, okay. and they go free. Understood. So I, I'm thinking we have to have a good conversation Level on that. Level the playing field. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So that, well, if I say something right now, as I see radio, I, I, I might be in trouble because I, I, I'm not with the, what we call cocophonism. I'm not, I'm not part of the team. But if I'm part of the team, you could be saved. Uh, for Peter, I've, ne I've never heard that word before. You're going to have to translate for <laughs> Oh, <okay. laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <Cocoa> for football. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Max, Maxwell. Um, timely from the president. Good platform. What do you think? Thank you, Kujo. Um, good morning. Um, Kujo, I think that, yeah, it's, uh, I think free speech, yes, is good, like we've all uh, alluded to, but it must be responsible. Okay. It must be more towards. Um, it, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be just. Who uh, determines what is responsible? Oh, could you, who determines what is responsible? Yeah. Um, so, ca 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 can we say anything? No, no, no. I'm just saying, is it who sets the agenda for what is responsible free speech? Oh, what is responsible? There are laws that guide uh, uh, speech. Mm. If you if you go beyond it, you know, yeah. the law can take care can take care of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the 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 point the point is that the point is that you see. Um, this sort of free speech and uh, whatever, 
I think I will put it. I will put it at the doorstep of of of, of politics and how it's being practiced. Mm. So you don't think I mean, I'm a politician? Uh, sorry, I'm a journalist. Uh, I, pr I pretend I'm a journalist anyway. If a politician is saying the wrong thing or he's lying, and I know he's lying, and I choose to put it on because I want to sell people. What, what I'm saying uh, that or something isn't whose fault is that? It can't I, be the I politicians. Want us, I want us to go to the genesis of, of this. See, some time ago there was. We've been around for a, a, a while. There, there was nothing like a newspaper review and, and all that. I, I think that, you know, politicians make the headlines. They talk. A session of the press sits somewhere. They pick, write the, 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 the print media. They write. And then the broadcast media will also, like we are doing, take it from the papers and then. So... The, I think that the agenda that is, that is what is re revolving around. So anything that does, that doesn't come into the paper, it's it's, it's not discussed. Mm. But there are certain pressing issues that that could be discussed even outside, and it's like it's like it has made the journalists so to be a little bit, you know what? Will I use the word lazy? Because yeah, just say it. It's fine. Lazy <laughs> because they just sit here in Accra, <laughs> look at papers, comment on it, and that that sort of thing. That's, Th that investigative journalism going to places, being at the spot to see what is happening, to me is, is, is lacking. And you see, now, now even the media has expanded. People, we, we have this Nyan, we have uh, news, we have uh, what? Uh, Ghana Web, and, and I don't know who controls those things. And, and people can just, can just write anything, you know, can just spew out any information. Look at, look at the propaganda against, against COVID. I mean, those who have taken the job. The, the sort of uh, conspiracy theories that are going with it. People are going to die. There are some uh, electromagnetic magnetism in the, in the distance that attracts. All these things are, are being spewed around. Who is checking? Who is checking what? So I think for the president to come out to, to talk about it, it's, I think it's in, the right, it's in the right direction. But I don't want you to only learn uh, to, to, to stop at just, just, just talk. It's... It must be backed by action and backed by ex ex execution. Ex execution. And, and, and also, like, like it has been said, politicians, some politicians, I mean, even some honorable members, they, they, just, they just talk mm. as if, as if there's, no, there's no constraint. Max, I said, they talk by heart. <laughs> <laughs> say it and be free. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> you are, you're being so nice. They talk by heart. They, talk, they just say things and... <laughs> Without, uh, without, <laughs> without uh, evidence, uh, nobody led. holds them to, to prove what they have said, and they are just going, nobody is bringing them to, to, to order. Right. And I was thinking that maybe I don't know, maybe in the private, the president might have, but knows, I mean, what he was talking about, and might have yes. talked to the people. But I think he should have, he should have really, like I heard you play uh, uh, a former, a former John, president, John Atemos, president's yeah. uh, speech. Mm -hmm. That's, there should be the time that you have to, to 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 be frank, okay, and talk as it, as it is, right, and and hold people hold the corporates to book right. or to to, to some right. advice, hold them to up. some stringent measures that they will know that no, uh, things cannot go on like that because that some of the some of the things that some honourable members say are, are a little bit okay. Without yeah. attacking uh, Parliament, we've, uh, we're attacking could, Parliament. Could you let me pass this. We managed to no, go we are there. Not attacking no, Parliament. Not, no, no, we've gone there straight. That's exactly so. where we've gone. Politicians and it's, uh, Parliament. So, <laughs> Peter, no. Could, could you brief one? No, no. no. <laughs> a brief no. one. No. no. I wanted to ask the, qu the question on the is whose responsibility? <laughs> you know, because you know the the infinite wisdom of every human being will help you understand what to say and what not to say at a given time. Mm -hmm. This same infinite wisdom has given rulers the, the chance to also decide what sh 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 should what be said and what should be said. What is the infinite wisdom? Uh, no, everyone has that natural uh, right. You decide, you decide what to say yeah. okay, at a given time. What you call the will. Your yeah. will. Yeah. Right. So, and the, the, that wisdom has also been given to rulers to also determine what should be said and what should not be said. And that has been codified into what you call the constitution or the laws. But my challenge had to do with a situation where it's not about it, just the enforcement, okay? It's not just about the enforcement. The enforcement could be done, but we should be careful not to also cause what we call the censorship. You know, Ghana as a democratic state, oh. free speech is a second-generation right. If you look at the Article 19 of the Universal Declaration um, uh, of Human Rights, it's there. 
the uh, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. Are you making it? a point? Because I'm making a point. No, you have no, no, I'm, I'm trying to let us understand that though the, the wisdom of individuals are there for people to express themselves, the, the, the laws are also there to also check. However, if you look at, if you look, look at the commission, the, the, the National Communication Authority, and look at the, 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 the National Media Commission, mm -hmm. the, the National Media Commission is to insulate the, the government from its own state media. Yet we are saying that the, the state should also regulate free speech. So uh, if, you, if, if you look at the structural challenges there, it means that free, free speech as a natural thing, or free press as an institutional thing, should be allowed, but its regulations shouldn't be the one that could put people out of, I mean, expressing themselves. As politicians are doing, we should allow them to do it. But then, if the law should be fair, it should be fair to everyone. Okay. All right. Um, back to where I was before uh, hmm. Peter uh, decided to, he must get his intervention in, by all means. Uh, Honorable, we went around the table, and you can see that we've come to the politicians. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, I don't know if you can stand and say that it's not the politicians. They set the agenda. We, the journalists, pick up the agenda. That's the conversation. Well, I wouldn't say politicians set the agenda. No? Okay. Politicians make statements, statements that um, can be productive or otherwise. It is for journalists who are trained mm. to spread the message, to pick the salient points, pick the good points, pick what brings development, and sell it out there. Oh, so you don't want to be responsible for what no. you say. You want somebody to now pass what you say. Being responsible for what you say is there. That's mm -hmm. one. But spreading the message. Because you press, uh, so, so we, I mean, take Parliament, for example. We have 275 uh, mm -hmm. MPs in there. Yeah. We all make statements in different shapes and forms. But the journalists pick what they want mm -hmm. and spread what they want. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I mean, I've made a statement on preeclampsia. No journalists picked it up because for them... It is not. It is not news. S they picked up issues that had to do with somebody, in quotes. Uh, I, I don't want to say what, whatever. But mm. they picked up the sensational ones and went out there to sell the sensational ones. So, it, it, that is where the problem lies. The problem, yes, the politician might make a statement even on the political platform, mm. but the journalist that has the tool <coughs> of broadcast, the tool to sell the message, the tool to spread the message also has a responsibility to select <laughs> because if you you gag people making um, uh, well, irresponsible statements by not selling their message of course that message will not get out there okay. number one so pol politicians yes they make statements but the agenda itself is set by the by the by the journalist okay. who pick and choose what they want okay. to to sell and I see that they normally want to sell senses now. Okay. News. That's, right. that's number one. Yeah, and so you don't think the politicians have the responsibility they to just, just be quiet until you've got something sensible to say? Well, <laughs> yes, I, I agree with you on that score. I agree with you. However, I'm saying that the politi politicians make all kinds of statements. That's why I use myself as an example. Mm. There are so many statements on the floor of the house every day. Mm -hmm. The journalists pick what they want to p they choose and pick and choose what they want to pick. And they sell what they want to sell. So... Firstly, um, I, I also want to see from the history of our journalism mm. in the last 25 to 30 years, you know, or even prior to that, it was a, a journalism that was fighting to um, have space in the discourse and also fight for liberty in quotes or for us to be able to express ourselves freely. Mm. In that um, uh, process, we had freedom fighters who became journalists. They might not necessarily um, have the... Uh, they were not journalists in quotes. Say, yeah. Exactly, they were freedom fighters who used journalism as a, a tool to s to 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 fight for a particular right, which was our democracy that we find ourselves in today. And we, over time, um, have developed, but maybe the development has not been um, quick enough to match up with the kind of democracy that we want to to, to build. Because if you take, even look, even if you look at the caliber of people that we who end up in our journalism institutions. It's a, it's the, the question marks. L if you take a, a radio station uh, or a radio company, like, let you take the BBC. 
read the profile of their journalists. Some of them are highly educated people from different fields. Mm -hmm. Must, um, they have um, skill sets in maritime engineering. Some of them have even been to war, have been soldiers before. So when they are speaking about issues got to do with military, they are fully vexed in the issues. In our part of the world, or in Ghana, I mean, some of the people that you meet, in quotes, found themselves there by, by chance, or found themselves there as alternatives to other opportunities that they wanted. That is the reality. So the caliber of the um, people that we find in the space is one. Remuneration is also another big factor. So, I mean, we all know that um, pay in Ghana is not the best, even compared to our West African neighbors, yet alone a, a young reporter that has just come out of school. Some of them are just working around freelance, trying very hard to find space, find opportunities here and there. So all these things feed into um, um, the way they set the agenda, um, um, the culture of journalism in Ghana. Okay. And those are the issues that are, I would say, underlying factors of the problem that we see on, on top. Mm. Because, seriously speaking, as a politician, I can line 10 journalists up today from very good media, media houses, find some money um, to make them happy, and write the story that I want them to write, and it to be published. Okay. Wow. We've just all been indicted. That, that, all of that, that you journalists out there. Uh, that's that is sad. what I wanted to, to... That we are bribable. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's okay. <laughs> this is uh, the, the point is that all this, all this, what, what the Honorable uh, Member said, you know, were all foreseen. That's why the, 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 the instituted whose diploma uh, 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 course in journalism in the school school school, school of, of journalism in, 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 uh, in, uh, just, in just, the university just, of Ghana. Just to catch you, remember um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ohene, yes. I remember, if I remember quite well, a few years ago made the assertion that we should make journalism a, a post-graduate course. That is the point. And that people that took her to the, to the cleanest. Mm -hmm. Because for me, um, it's like even reading, even law, mm. a lawyer who went to uh, uh, school right after secondary school, went to law school, bar school, compared to a lawyer who has a degree in even history before entering law school, mm -hmm. are completely different. Mm. Their thought processes are different. They are exp they are, their views of issues are different. You know, the, the way they express themselves. Th and mm -hmm. for me, that um, example she gave at that time, she gave an example of a, a BBC journalist who was a, a doctor by profession over years, had practiced, and then coming to BBC as a correspondent, oh, as an a correspondent expert on and as, as an expert on that, and therefore could make meaningful contributions. Mm. Meaningful contributions. Okay, so you you're know, saying so right now me, training is one. Honorable, remuneration is honorable. Two. You're telling me that the 276 of you in Parliament there, yeah. we should now set standards and make sure that before you <laughs> go and set to you put see, yourself up to be a politician, a, not just a politician, the, a representative of the people. Yes. You must have qualified to a certain degree. You should have some set level. We should I give you stipulations. Oh, that, that well, you'd be happy with law. that. I'll be happy with that because, okay. because right. even, in par <laughs> even in Parliament... Because um, you're making laws for us, so, but yeah, some yes. of the people we've seen there... No, no, no. They, they don't necessarily have to be lawyers. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to be a lawyer. You're not, not That's being what a lawyer. Saying. All I'm yeah. saying is that you must have some certain capacity. Okay. That's one I agree. Because it's not... the point. I mean, reading... Um, um, what do you call it? The statutes and all those things and contracts and if you don't have any uh, background or background any expertise or, or even yeah. some, you, be able to you able can't contribute. You can't right. contribute meaningfully. All right. So you basically, we're, we need to set um, a higher standard mm. in what you term a profession, and I'd call being even a parliamentarian is is a profession. It's a profession, it's not, yes. Not just a yes. uh, thing that you did. But can we also pass a law something could you that could bar politicians from from talking radio stations? No, I don't mean that because no. you see. <laughs> Uh, radio station itself is a, is a business, yeah. number one. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a business. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, it's a business. Which has been dominated by politicians. It's, that is not, it's that is not a problem. It's a business. It's like any other business. <laughs> That's number one. But the content is the, the, the problem. We are not talking about who owns the business or runs the business. You can have a... a well, it can have an influence. No. Th and that is why I'm saying you cannot, for example, say you are buying politicians from running, owning radio stations. No, 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 no that's, 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 that's not, that's that's not, not it. You can say that, okay... Um, your editorial uh, team must have this caliber of people who you know that uh, are, uh, cannot be 
manipulated or controlled mm -hmm. by... And you know that because point. they've gone to school, so they can't be manipulated. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I mean, no, I'm no, sorry. No, that's that's no, question. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the logic. Yeah. You're saying that because he's gone through a certain amount of training, no, but, but, therefore but, but, he will but, but, be... There must be some C. No, there, there must be some C even. At least. No, but we've seen professionalism not at play from people who should know better. That's fine. I agree. So what? See, I didn't equate... I'm not equating education to being, uh, what do you call it, uh, professional. No. Mm. What I'm saying is that you, if you have gone through a certain level of training, mm. it's fine. Journalists in Ghana go through a certain level of training. However, what I'm saying, what I believe is that it's not adequate, number one. Number two, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The, no. The remuneration. The, the remuneration is, is there, but the caliber of people that we recruit or who find themselves in that space. That's why I, 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 stick, I stand by what Elizabeth O'Henry said at that time. Okay. That people okay. with different professional backgrounds, so it becomes a postgraduate course, kind of, you know? As opposed so to a... As opposed to a just a coming degree. out of secondary school and getting in there and all that. You can develop from there as well, depending on your passion and all that. But what I'm saying is that when you have a broader perspective of life or you have a broader um, educational background on issues or particular areas, then your, your contributions are richer. Right. Are richer. Let me put okay. it that way. Oh, uh, oh, the alternative sometimes, <laughs> it is what uh, the perception sometimes, is, we are too known. Because a crowd do. <laughs> I say that about presenters a lot. But, Peter, but you're going to make an intervention. Yeah, don't, don't you think it could also restrict the, the entry density of um, journalists into the, the media landscape? Because once you make it postgraduate, obviously, like compromising yeah, if, if you don't have those kind of uh, certificates, you may not be able to um, so, so, okay, so what do you do? Today, <laughs> you we have citizen <laughs> journalists. We have all forms of journalism. Yeah, the new I media, mean, as, new media as well and all that. You don't need to be, uh, in quotes, trained to be in that space. But that's even, that poses a danger. It's like telling me that you have a pilot who learns how to fly on, uh, on, the, the, on the internet. And a simulator. <laughs> if you uh, learn how to fly on a simulator and then ends up in the cockpit of your plane, <laughs> and you say that, let's fly together. I mean, you get out, you get out of, <laughs> of the plane. So... Those are things that we really have to. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to. No, for, that's for, a, me, that's for me, a very bad, tragic example in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> a pilot on a simulator says it's fine. Yeah, I, it's fine I, I have a challenge with politicians owning um, um, media outlets, seriously, because um, they, they use that as a way of setting the agenda. Is that a, is that a challenge to free speech, though? It, it is, How? because even, even if you ask some of the journalists who work with um, media outlets mm. owned by certain politicians. Mm. They will tell you that there are certain issues you have to censor. Mm. You don't have to bring these issues up because it may um, derail or um, speak ill of the government or the opposition party, depending on where the media outlet is supposed Look, to be. Look, when you go to America, Understood. you find the same thing. Fox News speaks for uh, the, the Republicans, uh, uh, yeah, others speak yeah. for the Democrats. You find, uh, you find uh, it everywhere. Uh, well, well, Honorable, why, do, uh, why does everybody <laughs> use that example of Fox <laughs> to be the coverall for everything? <laughs> We're in Ghana. Yeah, no. And the Ghanaian problem in Ghana, is... Yes, in Ghana, we contextualize our problems. Come on. <laughs> yes. The owner of <laughs> CNN yeah. back in the day was obviously a Democrat. Yeah. Everybody knew this. And I had one. No, but the, the point I'm trying to make here is that how much did that actually influence oh. reportage? Between 20... Don't use between, Fox, between, because between Fox was... 2016 just, and 2020. Yeah, because the person they were dealing with, he, he deserved it. Please, let's... Why? You know, in CNN general turned term, into Clinton no, no, News no. Network. In we're general just fighting terms, for Clinton. In general terms, according you know what I mean. Trump. We're just fighting according for Clinton. According to, thank according you. According to Donald Trump. But I, I wonder why we do that, because obviously, and also, why are you assuming the same level of sophistication in the American media yes. marketplace yes. that exists in Ghana? Yeah. yeah. Why are you assuming that? Why should you assume that? Is that even a fair comparison to oh, make? Oh, come on. No. So, oh, come on what? <laughs> people get, people get, believe you. that there are witches in this country. Oh, that's there not are, true. You think there are oh, really? people in the oh, United States who don't believe that there are witches? No, 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 no. That it informs yeah. people killing people? Yeah. Come on. Yes, even in America, that's Including why. Including their children. Remember, remember yeah. Yeah. Yes. What's his yes. name? <laughs> Jones. Jonestown. Yeah, Jonestown. Yes, yes, yes. The Kool-Aid massacre. What was it? Yeah, yeah. You know Jim what I Jones. mean? I think you're just. Yeah, you're now we're going to no, just. No, 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 no. no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> where we're what we're talking about is yeah. the influence and how wide that influence can be. No, 
a, a politician owning a media media space in this country, mm -hmm. how much is their influence because of that? I was asking, I was asking yeah. because of what Peter said. A and I think that here, yes, it makes a big difference. Does it make that big a difference in, in America? In America? Mm -hmm. But here it makes a difference. Well, big yes, one. it does uh, in America. Really? We know that people, the, the, we know no, where no, Madoff people, starts. People, are, people are told. No, no, no. no. Where does CNN start? doesn't tell people know, how to think. You know, people you know, already know what the yeah. station does. No, yeah. but they're not going there because they want to. They can, they can, they can have an influence. Look, there was a show on CNN. Joe Como or whatever. Yeah, Joe Como. He spends the better part of 2020 just vilifying Trump. Yeah. Everybody who listen to him after three months would, 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 would just the, go after Trump. The I mean, the point I'm trying, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, please respond, but I'll answer this for me. Yeah, I'm talking, in America. and I said, I used this very poor, poor example of the witches and everybody, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> the bottom line is, they don't go on the streets and then do mob action against a 95-year-old woman in the streets of America because but somebody said, no, no, no. The point I'm trying to make is that we are a lot more innocent in this particular space that we're talking about. It we are convicted by what we hear. Uh, it it, might, not be, it might not be, if I can help, it might not be witches in America. But if you look at the um, recent spate of shootings in America, mm. what was it influenced by? Mm. Was me, um, new media influencing people uh, people go on on YouTube, Facebook. They have influencers there telling them. I mean, the riots that happened post um, the elections in America uh -huh. that they stormed. Right. What was it? It was new, it was media, new media, and media. You think making a case for <laughs> Trump uh, being cheated at the election, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. Okay. And that's what flew, oh. um, fueled it. And people went in the okay. entered um, the White House and all those places. So it was the media, and it's got nothing to do with the fact that the people just needed an excuse like football hooligans. In, in the UK to get on the streets. Because no, I mean, what, whatever, what, to whatever motivation you ascribe the irrational behavior, yeah. wherever you live in the world, you will have people who behave irrationally and either latch on to some message they're hearing out there as an excuse for something they already want to do, or sit, to use the word, we're much more innocent. Um, the people who believed in the Obama birther movement yeah. in the United States and presented detailed information, so-called, about how he could not possibly have been, been born, born in, in the America. United yeah. States yeah. of America, mm -hmm. are they any more intelligent or sophisticated? Uh, and, and you see, you're using the man? wrong word. No, 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 no. no. Don't okay, tell me you, about intelligence. You may, it's not you about you may, you may, you may object to my choice of words. Whatever you call it, a frame of mind, an <laughs> attitude. Is it much different from the attitude of people who believe that you know? My my the woman uh, the the old woman the eighty three year old woman with the grey hairs witch. out of the bottom of her chin must be a witch and she flies around at night and she is the cause of all my problems at night. I mean you you get those kinds of beliefs in any society inclined mm. to paranoia. I would agree that we haven't reached a stage of huge sophistication with the way our politically owned media work in this country. So. For example, there's this very crude association. You're owned by ex-politician. So therefore, therefore, this must be mm. the message you put across, and this must be what you're saying, even down to the choice of your hat that you wore for Salah yesterday. Yeah, yeah. That it's must be determined by some political yeah. motivation. The, the color must be, uh, must be It must be signaling <laughs> something deep, you know, to, a, a, Facebook messaging. <laughs> to a Facebook <laughs> listenership and, and Facebook w audience out there. Where... where if you like, the Western countries with their so-called sophisticated media uh, have an advantage on us. It's just that they've been in the game for a bit longer. So it has now got to the stage where actually if you work for a politically aligned publication, as I have done in the UK with Roots in the Labour Party, founded in 1913, as our magazine was, you, are actually, you actually go out of your way to be seen to represent the other side because people think, oh, you're aligned to this side. And so it is absolutely part of your duty to represent all sides of opinion. Okay. And it's a question of time. You know, as, you know, kind of some people we know are trying to do, if uh, you, you stand open to being accused of being politically aligned, you will try your darndest hardest 
to represent all sides of opinion. That becomes your job. And Ghana is inching along in that direction. Just unfortunately, because the economics of particularly newspapers yeah. are so badly established, you know, the whole media has gone through a really bad time advertising wise. So somebody gets up to them and says, I want to start a paper to promote my campaign to become an MCE or whatever. And they will find people who will do that for them and put out completely biased you know, inflammatory materials sometimes. That is because of the economics of the situation okay. in which we are. But there are people who are, who are proving honorable exceptions to the rule and are trying to do something very different. It's a question of evolution. And as it goes back to what somebody was saying earlier on, should we have self-regulation in the press? And if we have self-regulation, how is that to work? So that we have standards of taste, decency, uh, being representative of cross sections of opinion and that sort of thing. Okay, all right. So I was trying to br bring about some peace. I disagree with everything you said. <laughs> uh, and you want I to start a fight? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's all about fighting. Oh, yeah, I, I think that we are, we are all going to in the same direction here. But um, if if we're going to do the equitable balance, where is the biggest challenge? But we've got to let we've got to move on to other things. But we talk about free speech. We talk about the fact that there there must be control. We agree somehow. We talk about who's to blame and everything. But at the end of the day, if we had to say just very simply, who, where is the greatest responsibility in all of this? Is it with the media, the people, the purveyors of information in whatever form? Or is it with those who know that they control the media by virtue of how they speak, by virtue of their ownership of parts of the media? Who, is it, who's, who has the greatest responsibility to get it right and keep us safe and peaceful? I just want a quick opinion from everybody. Who has the greatest responsibility, Maxwell? Bo both parties. I think the greater of... Masai, <laughs> and Pesau. Yeah, why, why do you, uh, this on the fence business, you're going to get splinters. No, no, but, oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, 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 frankly speaking, I think, I think in, 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 in our current dispensation, it's my opinion that the politicians have a bigger sway over the, over the, over the, over the media. So... The, the, both of them, the politicians should be guided by what they, 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 they say, and then the media people too should also be circumspect. In, yeah, Max, in, well, in we agree that. But you, you, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to let you get away with that. You're just saying what we've all said just now. I want all a decision, right, a clear decision now. Tell me who ha bears the greatest responsibility. The politician who bears the greatest responsibility, ah. in my opinion. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we have institutions <coughs> and we have individuals. The individuals express their opinions, institutions feed opinions. I think we regulate institutions. Mm -hmm. um, we could also regulate individuals' actions mm -hmm. um, using laws. So the onus rests on the state to look at how we could have a regulatory environment that could regulate institutions like the, the press. And then, uh, you know, it's quite difficult to regulate individuals because. I can be my own, I can make a statement. Mm -hmm. the, the new media is also coming with a different dimension, mm -hmm. which is equally affecting how to control free speech. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, the, it's the state, because it's the state that makes the laws, and the state that creates institutions. And you think the laws don't exist? I think that slander and libel and the rest Everything of it, is there. They're there. No, the, the laws are there. You <laughs> know, <laughs> Irresponsible <laughs> use of your mouth and your, your pen. The, you know, people are going to do that. That's why we have murder, and we have a law against it. But the people will still commit murder. I want to know who's most responsible so that we can move from that point. It, it, the only thing in the state is it, it, where the state that gives the environment for people to start, um, uh, create, or right. establish yeah. the media. Uh, it's it the same state that will give you that. that because because they are all codified rules. Okay, no so, problem. So, so it's the state. state that must be up and doing. That's what you're saying. Yeah, so you're just state. being, you sat really hard on the fence and found a third player. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I think that ultimately, right. the politician is responsible Good. because the people have placed a responsibility um, or their trust in the politician to run the affairs of the state. Mm. So the politician is ultimately responsible for whatever happens within the state, as um, he's alluding mm, to. Yeah. And for me, I think when it comes to free speech, ultimately, even if you're going to enact laws to gag um, uh, free speech, 
it would come from the politician. So ultimately, the politician is responsible for what happens uh, what next happens, yes. in, in our free speech. Uh, yes. Hello, look at it. Peter's got support. So <laughs> Rafi. Uh, so <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we, we got it. There are challenges uh, sometimes, and I, I don't mean to say the Ghanaians were, were stupid, and it, d for, don't for one minute think that that's what I meant. But, you know, when we're in a, a, not a volatile, but an excitable state, when somebody says something that already supports your particular p position or opinion on an issue, you're far more inclined to believe it than not. And sometimes our media takes advantage of that as well. And uh, totally misleads us sometimes, yep. as we know, with Fix the Country. Um, we wouldn't get it too much into that, but um, we need to be clear that uh, what we do sometimes could be the flame uh, to the gas that is leaking. All right. Um, our guests this morning, are just we finished um, vilifying the politicians and the media. We'll move on to other things. Uh, you know, uh, just recently... Uh, we, uh, we just want to talk briefly about this as well because uh, I, and I, the, my problem for the life of me, I can't understand why nobody's understanding that I have a challenge with the first lady giving the money back. <laughs> uh, and not because she gave the money back, but because of the signal it sends. And so the I want to focus the on the signal the that it sent. Uh, and people then defend by saying, but oh, she wrote in her letter that uh, it should not uh, affect anybody else's, is like without prejudice. Uh -huh. Uh, but that's in a letter that if we don't publicize it, nobody saw that it's without prejudice. What does it say to us as a nation? How are people viewing this decision? And I, I'm curious because I'm still wanting to find out what people really think about this. Um, uh, Max, I know we've been here, but I, I want the optics the, 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 and the, the record, the legacy of this decision. I, 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 don't, I don't get your question. Well. You don't get my question. You see, the, the first lady made a decision to give the allowance back. That's fine. We're not challenging that. And it's the challenging her right. But I am of, you know, these things are the decisions that have Long far reaching yeah. consequences for even how, what, the, the hesitancy with which we might even approach the idea of talking about first ladies and giving them some sort of, not even reward, just something to keep them going as they do what they have to do with their programs, etc. Now I'm wondering whether this action may have that kind of uh, impact at all. Would it create a hesitancy in us? Would it create, uh, you know, she gave the money back. She didn't keep it and say, let's sort it out. Now, what, what, are you, what is oh, your thinking? Yeah, she's giving the money back. Yeah, we that, get that, 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 that but what's the legacy? That's a personal decision. Mm -hmm. But going forward, mm -hmm. I think I think it gives us the opportunity. I cannot <clears throat> the, the 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 sort of uh, uh, implications thereafter mm. will depend. It depends upon how we tackle the whole the whole issue, because giving the money back, people people making noise, and then she maybe being infuriated to 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 bring back the money tells us clearly that there there, there was a there, there was a problem. The whole process of paying this thing that was problematic that that is why i don't know what the problem is but I see, maxwell does it say that you mm -hmm. see that's the problem because the others had received the same allowances whether increased no, so, or so why 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 was, why was the public outcry no, why can't. was the public outcry ignorance it's not, it's not you, oh. you see uh, you see um um, um cause course, causes bring effects the whatever it is ignorance or anything that is the perception people there was people found something wrong with it let us don't go to the merit or the merits of, of people's uh, mm -hmm. perception about whatever has happened. Now, the action has already taken place. Mm -hmm. The first lady has brought the money. How do we resolve the situation? Or how do we fix the situation in such a way that the implications and its repercussions will be assuaged in, in the sense that we can move forward if, we, if that is what we okay. want to do? So you don't that, is, that is what I think we must, we must be thinking about. Okay, all right. How and do we do it in such a way that next time, even when we want to do a similar thing, there will not be that public outcry, mm. whether, whether right or wrong. Was, uh, now, before I go, was there a public outcry was there, or was there a media manufactured political outcry? This is what we are talking about. Yeah, I know. That's this what is, I'm asking. No, this is what we have, we have, we have <laughs> just on, on, on earth that. You see, um, the politicians in, in collaboration with the, with the media, they set the agenda. So... If, if they think maybe somebody felt what was going on was not good, they brought it, it was brought into the limelight, and people held to it. 
did they well, believe it, wrongly or rightly did they believe it was not good or did they see it as an opportunity to turn something that could have been dealt with through education into yeah. an opportunity that's why I said to it spite. You, you, that one that one it is it is it is not me, me yes, and you. you and i because with it hindsight you, and I to decide. No, no, no. you see the Maxwell, point is that with hindsight we know now that what it was all about that's so what. we can make that statement now. That's what. What statement? That we you? know that it was a proposal exactly. that went through Parliament and not what was first reported as being she's yeah. going to take salary. Mm, she's decided exactly. she's taking salary, which was not the truth. But that's what came out initially. So with hindsight, we know the truth. Uh -huh. But so we, we have also we have also known that uh, even laws passed by Parliament or approvals from Parliament could be challenged by the by the by the populace okay that's it's also a fact so right. no they problem. must also be 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 listen that no certain certain parliament should be able to descend or politicians should be able to descend that this is a possible uh, uh area of controversy mm. let us maybe uh, widen the engagement mm. let us engage people in discussing it so that whatever will, whatever the outcome will be will be will be bought. No, trading on dangerous ground we'll, we'll because be Parliament in. represented the people and approved it. Yeah, so but they, should, they, they, no, no, no. they have to consult. They, yeah, I'm no, sorry, but they, they are did. represent, but they have to consult their okay, constituents. No, no problem, but I'm not going to start blaming no, Parliament. We no, already had that conversation. We consult all the time. No, there was consultation. <laughs> we already yes. had that there was conversation. So, so was, yeah. issue, was there a consultation? Yes, on this issue? yes. Yeah. Yes, and then, it's, and, then, it's, and then what it's happened? All informed in the the actual report. The how the wide the report, report. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, please. Uh, you understand where I'm going with this? I'm not. I know. We've been we've done the blame game already. Yes, yeah, so I'm not going to go in the blame game. But, you know, I'm yes. looking really, and I want us to think about Ghana the way we receive certain gestures, statements, especially from. She's the first lady of the republic. She's not the tea lady selling me yeah. cocoa in the morning. <laughs> You know, what are the ramifications, repercussions of this? I really, as in my personal opinion, I think uh, returning the money was hastily done. You know, um, in, 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 in our, even in our culture, we don't, we don't return, uh, let's, let me use the word gifts, mm. hmm. back but that way. I'm, I'm using please, gifts. Please, I want to Hold know, on. I want everybody <laughs> not on Facebook to know that the, Honorable used uh, gift in quotes. <laughs> gift in quotes. <laughs> yes, we don't return gifts in quotes. Um, that way. Mm -hmm. um, even if you reject it, we have a process of doing it. So I think it was done hastily. That's my personal opinion because the work of the first lady is not just the ceremonial things that you see the first lady do. The first lady in Ghana and the first lady in the United States play completely different roles. The first lady in the United States never pays school fees, hospital bills. She's not um, obliged to raise any charity, I mean, do any charity work and raise funds and all that. She just follows her husband. In our, in our part of the world, the first lady... Oh, I think that we should, should beg to differ with that, that she just follows her husband. Uh, well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but we know what you mean. There's more exactly. work to be done here. We're yes. a developing country. Exactly. There's more work. Our first ladies... Uh, and from our history, we've seen what happened to uh, some of our first ladies in the past here in Ghana. Liman's, Mrs. Liman, Mr. Mr. Liman himself, as president, a former president, he became a pauper. He became a pauper in Ghana. So we've gone through that whole history. And in the last 25 years, we've seen uh, how first ladies have supported the works of their husbands who found themselves in, uh, in power. It's not every first lady that said she wanted to be a first lady. Maybe her husband was just popular in the community, and the community moved him up as a, a public figure. And today, he has become president. So, therefore, she, she quits everything that she's doing. People even think that the first lady with bodyguards is, is a privilege. There's no privilege. She has lost all her, her, her privacy. All her privacy. She can't even go out with uh, her own grandchildren to have lunch in a public space. It, 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 can, it cannot happen. All those things. Um, that, 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 that's part of the. the, 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 the uh, that's part of the. That's, that's why part I said. Of the, this is no, when, when, part of the what? When she yeah, married her husband, when she. Where is it? Mr. Max, Mr. Max, please. Vows in church that says. When she married her husband, that was not part of the contract. She didn't even know that. You never. She didn't know that her husband would end up in that space. Exactly, because we don't know the future. We all anticipate. Because we don't know the future, and we have a peculiar. A, pe a peculiar <laughs> um, cultural setting where people see their political leaders as, in quotes, demigods. 
and that is why we have to demystify. But it's not. It's not. It is not. That it is not something that you can do. Paying school fees. It's not going to be easy. Paying school fees and all that. It's not the work of the parliamentarians. It's not. It's not the work of the president. Yet, 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 people. Yet, you have. You have allocated yourself to do that. Yeah. No. No, you have you have taken up that responsibility the, in order to the, in order to your, influence this and to get votes. No, that is the, the that people is in your community. So it means a vote buying no, program. The, 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 the people in your community don't 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 know what you're talking about. They don't see that. What do I know? All they have done. All they have done. Why do pay my school? No, Max. Max. The truth is that we have rules of the the of the chiefs, given that one to pastors and imams, and then. The roles that the chiefs play in, in their society mm -hmm. as um, um, demigods, mm -hmm. they've given that to the politician. That is how the people see their political leaders, including the first lady. The first lady is not elected, but she does almost the same job that her, the, the husband is doing in terms of going out there to please the people. I can use my own self as an example. My wife is a teacher. People go to her in school. Mm. With their children. Why? Because her husband today is the yeah, MP. Is it, is it not because of how we have conducted no. ourselves? No. Yes. No, you see, Listen. no, no. No, you see, until so I became, society, no, no, no. You know, this is the society we live in. Society. Society. You are not, no, no, no. no. The nearest big man. This is the, yes, <laughs> this is the concept <laughs> of, this is the, this is the concept of our, this is the concept of our political leader. finish this point. This is the concept of the political leader in the minds of our people. So you cannot just wish it away. It doesn't go away. No, it's, no, no. it's years of education that will bring us into that space. I, I don't see my political leaders in such that a That is you. you are, and you are in the minority. So the first lady, for me, <laughs> no, I mean, on, on board, just before you go for, for, no. forward, I just want to finish this. Maxwell, yes, don't sir. tell me that nobody has ever not, people don't call you and ask you to help them just because they can. And that is what the Honorable is talking about. The very fact that we... Even you, you've been placed in that situation, mm, and yeah. you know it. I, I, no, I, I don't want you to respond because you know. Yeah, what I'm but the point, the point I want to no, make no, is no, that you've made I your can point. To do it or not to do it, no problem. And first lady, ask me, I no problem. Choose, but so no, no, no you, 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 you choose to do so. You, you no not do it because it's some money, but the government to do it because it's people's money. Oh, no, but just complete. So, so, so the first lady, the first lady, the first lady's position. I would say has become a convention, you know? Mm. There's a, res mm. the, a responsibilities that have become part it's of a response. Historical. Yes, it's, it's yeah. become a convention, and conventions are part of laws. Which, which, so you, which you also derive benefits from So, it. I mean, the NTMWA so committee... I didn't know you could be like this. Over, <laughs> uh, took all, uh, took all these, these things into consideration and said that, look, you know what? Yes, we have been giving them stipends. Let me, I'm using stipends right. mm. cautiously. We've been giving them stipends. So, why don't we... Re, um, bring them into, we have been doing it in the dark, bring it into the light, literally. Mm. And then you bring it into the light, and of course, we, people were misinformed by the media again. We were misinformed by the media, and people took uh, positions that they didn't even, uh, they di they, people had not even read. Indefensible the, positions. Yes, they had not even read the committee's report, and then took, took, took positions. But the reality is that, for me, I think they do a very, very good job. Look, there's a, a constituent of mine who has a very rare disease. The only two people in Ghana with that disease. Rare disease. It takes it costs her 15,000 Ghana cities to take care of herself every month. She can't afford it. I cannot pay that for her. I cannot use that my common fund to take care of her. A constituent in my, in my, my constituency. She was even brought to me by some, um, uh, an executive from the opposition party. Right. But I had to, I just, I, I had to I, I, I go to the first lady's office or send it to the first lady's office that, look, we have to use your office to talk about this disease. So do a letter. I'll add my letter. We'll go there. I sent her to an officer, and I said, look, go through the processes, and let us make it an agenda so that we can start fighting for this particular disease because this is there. It happens to a lot of people, but we, uh, uh, people don't recognize it. It's now that doctors are seeing that people in Ghana are also uh, facing that from suffering from okay. it. exactly and then we use that office and we are going to use that office to to go and fight for um the publicity that we need blah 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 it is not something that uh, i can i don't agree listen <laughs> if i understood you don't agree we got it but this is our, our societal <laughs> yeah. context 
Right. This okay. is a societal so conversation. In conclusion, so, so, I, I don't understand. The Ministry of Health, this yes, is purely a yes, of health yes the Ministry okay. of Health can do it. That's fine. I know the Ministry of Health can do it. But in our society, there are some the things that we know no, that... There are challenges. So you need to get people to also assist. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to go to the break, Honorable... Yeah. But, but I have to also make Please. my statement on that. You know, Peter, you don't. If you interrupt, you won't. I want Honorable to actually conclude and I can come so to So for me, I think that... <laughs> Um, in conclusion, it, it, it was it was it was um, hasty mm. on her part to return the money because now it creates the impression that oh she might not need the state support. Mm. It doesn't mean that others might not need the state support. Mm. Other former we even have former first ladies offices that we we support and they do good works. They are also working hard. So um, if she does that, I mean what she has done. Um, creates an impediment for some others in the future. Right, okay. You know, and for me, I think that we should go by what the sixth, um, the seventh parliament approved on the 6th of January, and then we, we, we continue from there. Right, okay, thank you. So yeah, we yeah, could you, I think what Honorable Peter. says, right, I think uh, they've made the, the, the history, and they also set the pace for um, any government and other first ladies to ensure that uh, privileges are privileges, but then um, it goes with what I always say, accountability. Exactly. It's also a way to tell parliament to go back and enact an act of parliament to ensure that, as I, I said last week, to define the offices Gets done right. of the first yeah. ladies yeah. because they approved the emolument with that act of parliament. Look, all the Article 71 office Peter, holders... You're not going to take us there. I understand. Done it. All the no, Article no, no. 71 office holders... I don't care. I want they all have an act of parliament. So if you want to pick any other uh, emolument to that, you must have an out of parliament. Understood. So it's historical. Peter, but I think please it, focus. It, 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 do you know? Right. Do you remember I, my I understand. question? <laughs> we are all could so I know. No, do you remember the question? No. I do. I do. No, I want to see. This is about the about perception. For me, this is the challenge. You see, I, I get. We. I think everybody mm. gets it that we have to get it and do it right now, but the decision to send the money. No, I, I've told you earlier that it's 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 a mis. It's, it's a misplaced decision because, you know, the media didn't do a good job. They lifted what could cause public outcry. Sensational. And, and that is what came out of the entire uh, article, I mean, the internal West report. And the First Ladies realized that the whole thing is coming on them, so it is appropriate to forgo all those um, uh, benefits. Mm. Then, so the public outcry will then come down. I, I think... As I, as I mentioned, it's a misplaced decision at that time. The message that it sent. Because, you know, it's a presidential privilege. You know, it's part of presidential budget. And that is given to them because of what they do. And nobody can, I mean, downplay what they do in Ghana. So the message it sends is... So it, it is telling us that we have to codify that and ensure oh, they, they, they are placed on a proper uh, remuneration so that we can hold them accountable in mm. future. Now, that might actually have been what the first lady was looking for, is that simply, you know what, until such a time as you sort this thing out officially, and I'm just ba st stepping back from it, that might just be the, pers uh, the thought process. Listen, yeah, hey, brother. sort yourselves out and come back to me. There, I'm here. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I would like to, I would like to, hey, let's just give her that. On this benefit occasion. of the doubt, yeah. Get benefit of the doubt on that, on that one. And then I, uh, when we come f back from the break, she can do her agenda thing. Uh, it's 9.22. <laughs> so we'll take a break and we come back in a minute. Your late morning radio experience. <laughs> Your late morning radio experience is about to change. So the voice. The voice. The voice. The voice. The voice. The voice. Yes. It's me, your girl, Caroline. Get the best of music, art, and lifestyle, and don't forget, it's 99.5. 10 to 1. Radio, 99.5. It's coming on 10 to 1, baby, you got it. Hey, hey, hey. What, what, what's up? What's, what's up, up, everybody? It's your girl, Caroline. Make, make sure to tune in. On Nitro Avenue. Turn on the night. Baby, we are doing music, combos, and gossip. All the scoops, the lowdowns, and the meltdowns. 
Nice show for everything you see. What's playing and showing? What's popping and trending? All the celebs and stars. That's the golden time of day. Accra, tune in. On air, Asase Radio 99.5. Online, that's Asase Radio. Web, tablets, and phones. Nitro Avenue with Black Boy is on weeknight. Black boys, black boys gonna turn on the nights in the capital again. Nitro Avenue, music, convos, info, trends. Nitro Avenue is exclusive to Sassy Radio 99.5, the voice of our land. Asasi 99.5. This uh, conversation still goes on. And um, let's be clear, we're not trying to go back and rehash. We're just simply looking at the broader uh, implications. And you can see that uh, there's a little bit of di disagreement still, but in general terms, and because of who we are, you know, the same influences, we have the chieftaincy syndrome still within us a lot. And as we grow, some of these things are, they take a bit longer to, I used to, no, I'm not asking you a question. I don't know why you're still talking about it. Maxwell is just irate this morning. I really have no idea why. <laughs> because the matter has been resolved. The money's gone back anyway. Go and higher grade fuels have been tried, tested, proven, and accepted over the years as most suitable for all engine types, including the latest vehicles with the most modern engines. Um, go and higher grade fuels come in Goyle Super XP Ron 95 and Diesel XP. Sold in every Goyle station and not just selected stations. Remember that. Every Goyle station. Fill up with Goyle higher grade fuels. Ajibabia. Goyle. Good energy. Goyle. And I'm hoping that all the members of parliament, ministers of state, and how's your father who are buying the V8s will be using Goyle higher grade fuels in their vehicles. So the money comes to Ghana. Just saying. Um, and I'm not even going to touch the V8 business right now, even though a, a member of parliament is here. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, let's go on to other things. And um, uh, we, we talked about um, freedom of speech, but uh, there are other issues going on. And um, one of the issues that's come up recently, gentlemen, is um, accusations, uh, uh, allegations. Um, uh, and then it, uh, people say, oh, there should be an independent inquiry. Uh, we're talking now about the $5 million bribe. And, um, and then Sheshe. Uh, Akutampo uh, indicates um, today in the newspapers that um, uh, it's ridiculous, it's crazy, the allegations, etc., etc. Again, the media spotlighting the thing and headlining it in such a way that you could almost believe that uh, the money had already been paid, when in fact <laughs> there was nothing like that, not even in what the original accuser had said, was it indicated that he'd already paid a, a peso of such money. That, sorry, that the chief had even paid a peso of this money. Uh, our, our media's response in this particular circumstance and uh, our leaning here, leaning here, uh, what are your thoughts about it, General, uh, gentlemen? I'll start with you. Um, oh, uh, Peter, I'll start with you because then you said I don't talk to you enough. Go on. <laughs> right, you know, <laughs> this issue is, is, is just not about um, setting up Commission of Inquiry or uh, getting public inquiry into this. A allegations into bribery cases are criminal uh, cases uh, under, the, under the criminal um, code of um, Section 239, especially when it's about public um, officials. So once it is a criminal 
um, keys. Uh, in matters of this, how to go to the CID. I'm, I'm questioning this, P Peter, because look, mm -hmm. somebody makes some silly statement in paragraph two of his letter talking about something totally unrelated to the five million. Now, oh, you waff on a World Cup because that document would not even have been in the public domain if it hadn't been attached to another letter. So he made somebody makes an accusation in a beer bar. Are you going to take him to court? No, no, no this is a response to um, a complaint made to the Ghana Legal Council. Right. So no, no, you're not, you're not, you're not getting what I'm saying though. Does is it everything that you must respond to? It, it depends. If you know some of these things are going to, I mean, intimidate. have, have intimidate you or cause, you know, I mean, reduce your reputation to, I mm. mean, that you have to, I mean, obviously re um, reply. It also depends on the position you hold. Mm. You know, so some of these things you don't have to downplay them and say, well, let us. Um, overlook them and see what, what, what the outcome will be because of the political capital others may want to also make out of that. Mm. So it is key you have to react, but the, the reaction should be in accordance to um, what you do, uh, especially within the laws and your position as maybe the chief justice or a lawyer of I mean, a higher court. Mm. So it is not just <laughs> anything at all we should, we should downplay. I think um, having it at the Ghana Legal Council to investigate, having it at the, at the CIA to investigate, it, it's in order. But why should we make some of these things public? Uh, that, that's my concern. Because if the letter had not been public, the response had not been public, I'm not sure this could have gone to the CID or others or the media could have even made uh, I mean, news out of some of these things. So uh, I'm much concerned about the office of the, um, chief, justice. the chief justice and how we are discussing it as if he looks more like <laughs> a, a criminal in, 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 in all his dealings because five million dollar is, is, is a huge sum mm. and you, you cannot allege that. So I'm saying that the, the lawyer is, <laughs> I mean, he's very bold to make that wild um, yeah, allegation. Right. very bold. Um, yeah, I see the compensation being sought, we are now told is 16 million. I was looking at the land issue and I thought, how do you value land in millions anyway? Then I realized, oh, it's about the value of the usage and everything else that is. Yes, there the, the are other documents out make, mm. making the whole case a historical one. Yes, yeah, I mean, historical dating, I think, from uh, 1969. Ghana, Ghana government eminent domain yeah. issue. So Coming yeah. back to uh, uh, commercial ownership and then trying to get some money yeah. at the back yeah. of that. Well, anyway, uh, that for, so for you, you're more concerned about how these documents get into the public domain. Yeah, that, that's my concern. Right. You, know, okay. we, we you right. have to be careful. Yeah. Uh, going forward, sir, but taking off from where, Peter, uh, the, what have been your thoughts about this? And you guys, uh, you decided we must have another inquiry, and you don't trust the inquiry that's been established, and it became political again. I don't even know how this could be political, but you, 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 Parliament got involved. You know, uh, Kojo, um, the allegations that have been made against the Chief Justice are not m mere allegations. Mm. These are very heavy allegations, um, not being made by any mean person, but a, a lawyer uh, of good standing. Really? Well, I mean, uh, there's nothing uh, that's, apart from the fact that he's gone before the General Legal Council MB now. And suspended before. Yes. Pr yes. So good standing would not be a, well, a good word to use, no? A lawyer who knows his job. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting it that way. Because there could be se several circumstances and other issues. We don't know about those ones mm -hmm. that led to that. But for now. So, um, these are not things that you can just brush under the carpet. I mean, the office that the Chief Justice occupies is the fourth highest office of the land. And uh, uh, my, opi my little opinion is that we should tread very cautiously. We should tread cautiously. Even though we want to unearth the details and get to know the truth behind all these allegations that have been made, we have to tread cautiously because if we are not careful, we will destroy that institution as well. And for me, that is where I agree with my brother here, that um, the way we leak documents or issues come out into the public domain, yes, fine. Um, people will go and look, after, look out for them. People will try to score political points. People will try to make political capital out of it, as he said. But we have to look at the broader picture. 
because all this that we are talking about is out there the gl global media is out there the global uh, um, legal fraternity the whole world will be reading about it people might not even come out to read the details of the of the history i mean of the of the issues later but we might end up um tarnishing the image of the state it might come to not it might come to nothing we will end up and the allegations might be wild allegations and it didn't even make sense or whatever you know but the damage would have been done so for me that is why i am praying that we tread cautiously especially the media that will be selling these stories or pushing these stories out Finn, i'm gonna have to stop you and ask <laughs> you this oh, yeah, especially the media where did they get the information because from? that's and uh, i mean not to go back to what we discussed earlier on <laughs> they are the managers of the tools that spread the information right okay and that's why i keep going back to them so the um, the um, self-censorship must be there themselves to know that look some of these things you don't uh, it's not everything that you discuss it's like watching your dirty linens in public yes you might have dirty linens but we watch them indoors so you be careful how let's be careful how we spread this um out there or discuss this out there right. because there are people's reputations at stake people's lives at stake families at stake some of them have kids they'll be going to school kids will be saying all kinds of things about that it might end up not being true okay. but the damage would have been done right uh, uh the latter part obviously applies to everybody who's yeah. slandered or libeled not just the chief justice right. exactly so when it relates to the chief justice is he not as subject to the same attacks etc as anybody else no no. Okay. No. 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 I want to. And I, no, and I no, said no, no for I, the reason. I, I understand. I disagree on that. I, I, you know, if we have taken out the criminal uh, libel status, mm -hmm. that it. But we have not taken out anything that that could cause contempt of the judiciary, mm -hmm. making even lawyers themselves unable to discuss matters of constitutional um, issues, especially when interpreted by the Supreme Court. Mm. It's also another form of. I mean, taking discrimination. yes, no, not discrimination, but it's it's a, it's a way of censorship and taking people out of the way of expressing their Peter, opinions on national issues. At what moment did anybody say that lawyers could not discuss uh, matter uh, d decisions made by the Supreme Court? Where does that happen? No, it's not. It's not. It's not your constitution. It's, it's not. Well, the law. No, where is but, it? But you know, law, 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 they, they discuss. They discuss. No. Um, no, no, he, I, well, I know where he's coming every, from. Not, not where has it moment. happened? No, you, 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 know you, know you know what? Not relating to the You know what? Can always be discussed. You know what? Are decisions? Yeah, but uh, you see, that's the point. There that are sensitive constitutional interpretations <laughs> from the Supreme Court. If you don't, if you're a lawyer and you discuss them on certain platforms, you're not careful. You could, you could be cited for contempt. I think it's going to be the the, the form and style of that discussion exactly. that would indicate a contemptuous behavior, not simply discussing it. So, as so a judgment. It's so easy to criticize the parliament. No, 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 no. Or I think that the activities of the far parliament more critical that of, the executive. of the Supreme Court's decision in the one you're talking about, far more critical, was the was the were the comments made by the lead counsel. Exactly. Far more critical. But they spoke to the law and not issues of whether or not the the judges themselves were in any way influenced. Could and you, I think that we you. need to be clear. Uncle could you, it, it looks no, no, like no, no, no. The, judici the judicial itself is far from being critique see the, the judiciary no, the judiciary no, all over the world all over the world judiciary um holds the society together at a certain level that's why we even bar them from doing some things you can't just call a judge your wedding not even come to your engagement there's so in, in, you can't call a, a judge to your private tennis court it, those things don't happen not because he's not human he's superior but it gets to a point that we, we place them above um, above the, the ordinary. That is the reality. That the is why I'm saying. Is that about is, laws. No, no, no. no, 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 no. That is why. That, that is why I'm saying. Not discuss that's legal matters. Say, that's no. That's why I'm saying that the issue with the CJ should be handled carefully. Okay. So that we don't end up destroying the CJ and realizing that there's nothing there. Okay. Yeah. All right, Peter. But I also want to understand that what the CJ saying? is also to not to be insulated from being critiqued. No. Is he because I see critic. Criticize you can criticize him, but criticize him context, exactly based on the law and your arguments against his decision. But don't, don't question his those, integrity. Those, those See, who make the law can be criticized, not on law. No, but, you but can't those who interpret the, the laws cannot be criticized. Okay. Or All right, Peter. Based on, I mean, I, I, I don't get there. I, I, I don't get no there. The the that's, that's the whole underlying thing. You just because a, a judge is a human being first and foremost, mm. but we are putting a, a, a place him up. 
the same as the president, the same as the parliamentarian. He looks at the head arm of government. When your best friend becomes a judge, he's no longer your best friend. Okay. When some, uh, your best friend becomes a chief, you and him are not the same. When your best friend becomes uh, uh, the a president of, of the republic, you and him are I'm not the same. Say I'm not going to say parliamentary. Not the <laughs> so, so I agree. No, that, but, but, it's, but, it's but, the truth. But the office, the the office is look, handling... The the is, you can grow no. up together. Let me see. You're not the same no, as see. a person, but the office is handling. Yes. It's the office funded by all of us. That's what it's so we have look, every right is, to that question you that. That is immaterial. Yes, I'm telling you. No, no. Okay. It is immaterial. No, it's not because it, look, see, so I say that the, the judiciary is. I mean, you try and slap, I uh, guess, for argument. No, no, for, no, no, slap no, your best it's friend. It's not even for argument. No, and no, then no, no, slap no, the chief justice. No, no, that's a physical <laughs> abuse. What I mean is that <laughs> the best can't we discuss you legal matters when it comes to the constitution? That's what I'm with the judiciary. Seriously. No. All I'm just trying to drive us is that. He occupies an office that must be protected. And anything that would denigrate the office, especially when we don't know the full facts of the issue, or we don't know the full, the full truth, it's only investigations that will get us there. But even the investigations must be handled carefully so that we don't have all these leakages and the eventually end up to and get the, your points. And the parliamentarians are, are the always... Peter, Peter, see. I think the point here is that, you see, um, the, there's somebody who occupies an office. And he does a very the the the, uh, the sensitive the judges mm. they, they control life. A judge, a judge is like a judge. demigod. You see, when your best friend becomes yes, a judge, he's he a can, demigod. He can he can order people according to the law to be killed. To be killed. And, and they, they are killed. So they should be placed in a way that uh, they are not influenceable. You see. That, I think that is it. That's why when you that's why I'm driving approach, in fact, you don't have to approach him, you don't have to uh, to we give him some reverence. reverence uh -huh. That's why, and that that reverence it, that it is the reverence that makes the office what it is. I have so no problem with that. I have no problem with that to reverence. To I have no problem with his position. What I mean is that mm -hmm. why is it difficult to always discuss issues of constitutionality interpreted by the the, the apex court? In Ghana, especially even on by lawyers, whether it's an academic on matters of law, you can't. You, I, I you can. You can. Democracy is a rule of law, so you no, mean I should understand what is happening. I, 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 you can't do that. Okay. Has anybody by the age from? But, but I, I, I think that Peter, Peter, I want us to be clear, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know where you're coming from with this. I don't know what you've heard. Well, I'm, digre I'm digressing a little. No, no, but you're, not. you're fine. <laughs> but I'm trying to say that I'm a bit concerned that you think that judgments made by the Supreme Court cannot be discussed. They can when it speaks to the law yes. and what the ruling was. But when your opinion questions the integrity of those people who Make made the decision, then, 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 then that is not a discussion of the law. That is a discussion of the reputation of the, of the individuals. And that is contemptuous. But integrity is equally yes, important. Yes, but you cannot question that and because Especially not if you're an officer of that same so I court. Think, I think unless unless you can prove what <laughs> yes, exactly, it's, it's slanderous. Literally, it's slanderous. Until we get there, until there's proof of whatever uh -huh. allegations unless are there, you are let's tread let's tread cautiously. Okay. Then you have the facts. Anyway, anyway let's prove. let's move on. We're, we're running out of time. I want to say thanks. You you uh -huh. wanted to make a final comment yes, on this question. What I'm saying is that these gentlemen have argued. I think this is you. This is uh, this is you. Is simple. You know, Obama gave us the solution. You see, we we have to develop strong institutions. Institutions devoid of politics so that nobody will question when a decision is taken by these institutions mm. you see if if we have confidence in our police and they are investigating this issue nobody should should, should, should go to sleep and whenever they come up with their report it will, it will be accepted okay but because we have we have we have we don't have confidence because of our, our yeah, politics because we don't trust the individuals in the institution no, no. <laughs> you see <laughs> <laughs> so 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 it's question but so let so let's let's devoid uh, uh, politics from our institution and let the institution grow, evolve, so that no human institution be, is sacrosanct. They, they can be robust, but you see, they can be robust enough to 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 offset this petty petty uh, argument. Because when you look at uh, whatever is going on, I don't know that anybody can just make an allegation and then we said committee the event. Michael just <laughs> said you make a, an allegation your beer bar. And then it ends and then up on sudden it uh, becomes a, it becomes uh, a <laughs> national, national, national and, discussion. And, and let's respect, uh, a bit let's, problematic. Let's respect our, our, okay, our, uh, we're running out of time. Uh, Gentlemen, your president has been quite long in getting to the issue uh, of um, setting up his MMDCs and all these things. Acho, we're doing the media budget review yeah. in uh, a few days' yeah, time, possibly tomorrow, even so. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if we ha there's been no announcement, so it's probably not going to be tomorrow. So 29th. 
So it's going to be next week. I think it's going to be Right. Yeah. So, so that's a bit problematic for everybody that we, MMDCs, we've got temporary Board, guys, boards, are not uh, boards uh, SOEs, we have issues. What's accounting for this delay and how much is it really impacting governance, government today and our ability to take some serious decisions? That's three and a half uh, years left. And by the way, the f last year, dear, is lame duck time. Let's so down. seriously. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go, before I come to go, uh, you, uh, let's, Mr. Governance, consultant, and all those things, yes? What's your thing? What's accounting for it? And please don't tell me COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. COVID does not slow down anybody's brain. I, 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 I cannot put my, fi my finger on what, is, what the problem is. Because um, if, if it's just a newly incoming government, uh, maybe we could have uh, spared him for that. But he has been on listen, know the people that he wants to work with, have seen uh, where there are shortfalls, and it, it, I think it is easy for him to plug those shortfalls if, if there are. If, if there are no for, uh, what shortfalls, you can still retain the people who were doing their job previously. If and confirm them. If, yes, and confirm them, mm. because now it's like uh, the, the whole nation is in, is in autopilot, and, you know, <laughs> if, uh, organizations don't have boards, uh, uh, people to take care of the district, the municipalities, and are all not there. So how are we running the the, the place? So I think uh, the, the 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 president should expedite action and and then appoint people to. So mm. to Can the president expedite action when there's so much appointing to be done? Uh, I, I've always wondered why he's doing so much of this, and it's literally personally. I've got to review the CV myself. <laughs> it doesn't matter where it came from. You know, so is, 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 I'm going to ask this because I want to ask your opinion. Is there, is there too much of this kind of responsibility that is div it is coming to the presidency directly uh, and should actually be devolved and not be part of his office? I think, I think, I think, I think uh, if you look at the the, t the the functions of the president of mm -hmm. appointing all these people, the heads of organizations, the boards, I think it's something that. Uh, will be will be will, will ex exert a toll, a heavy toll on 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 him. So, like we have been arguing, I think there must be a, a body that should see to that, so that the recommendations maybe may come to him, and then mm. he he either he approves, of, yeah. approves of it or otherwise recommendation with all those mm. things. Then he would, and even that he must get people who can assist him. You know, Quickly but the office, uh, the office of the president, uh, uh, there are there are there are ministers of state and all those there who can who can assist in those. So I think there must be some form of delegation. Mm. Public Service Commission might just have to do the job and then give him the recommendations. Yeah. So, you know you know what I mean? Set up a panel at Kofi Annan and then just get all the applicants to come. Uh, like they're doing at El Wak. So that we've got 5,000 poor yeah, young over. people sitting in... The sun. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, could you, you know, Peter. you know, th there are structural difficulties in, in the appointments. Uh, I'm saying this because... Um, if you look at some of the the, the acts of uh, parliament uh, to some of these institutions, you see that sometimes the president had to do this in consultation with the board mm -hmm. of that particular commission or institution. Mm. Now the board is not there to appoint the CEO. That can also be done with in consultation with the council of state mm. in certain circumstances or by an act of parliament, depending on what kind of commission or institutions we have. Right. So because there's no board to help appoint CEOs, we don't have CEOs. Now, there is the need for us to also have a board, and that should be done in consultation with the, with the uh, Council of State. Mm. They might be having other issues to, to work on, which could delay constitution of a board, and the board helping to appoint the CEO it's of the particular CEO, institution. Right. Apart from that, in appointment of some of these um, CEOs and um, heads of other institutions, we have the president's own favorite, and then we have constituency favorite. We also have parliamentarians and ministerial <laughs> kind of and favorite. And favorites. Go on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah it, it's real. <laughs> it's real. So it's becoming difficult to select the one that could be accepted by both at the presidency at the constituency level, at the party level, and also at the ministerial level. Mm. Because of these issues, that is why there's a huge uh, delay. 
Mm. <laughs> Again, mm. it's also very tactical for government to also do that. You need money to pay all these board members and these CEOs. Maybe there's no money. Well, the money might not be enough. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. As if they will say No, no, let's get there. No, no, no. You might think it is not. I'm just, I'm <laughs> curious. So you're telling me that the temporary guy who's sitting there now, he won't collect his money? No, he would. But if there's no money, how, how, how do you pay that? Wait. No, just the wage bill is already high. Tactical. So it's a, it's okay. a tactical thing. So it might be tactical. Yeah, it's very tactical but thing. you also see the political issues. Yeah, there's the political aspects, yeah. there's the economic aspect, which is very tactical. Oh, and we have the okay. issue the structural issues coming in from the um getting a board before getting a ceo and there's no board time for public service commission to get involved in some yeah, of this obviously stuff. this is this is the time for yeah. us to see some of uh, the, the public service commission working yeah, yeah we're, we're working around that work, yeah work, very, very important to yeah. have a more efficient system yeah. uh, i mean you're 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 sitting in governance how is this affecting your ability to do your jobs at all does it even impact you at all in any way in Parliament? And just generally, what is your thinking about six months, seven months on? Well, still don't have some of these people. Well, when it comes to the SOEs, uh, he's right with the structure because some of them have to be appointed through the boards and all that. And that's there. But when it comes to the MMDCs, mm. these are political appointments because they are the president's representatives in the in the districts, and we have an elaborate process to. S select who comes out because there are several factors that um, account for that, including some of the things he said to, a, to an extent. However, the traditional authority in that district, sometimes you have multiple traditional authorities in a particular district, mm -hmm. and there are ethnic issues that need to be mm -hmm. balanced. You have to negotiate with A and B. And then they have to deal with you as well. That's the old, um, yeah. I'll get there. Oh, no, just <laughs> add your own quickly. Parliamentarians there. as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> other political actors within the the district, and then also um, the most important thing is the person's ability to deliver on the on government services or and government then, and then the the shadow government. Too. No, the person's ability to deliver for the people. Is there a consideration so, of the opposition in that area at all? Sometimes. I mean, especially if you didn't even win in that area. Sometimes, mm. yes. Sometimes, mm. yes. So there's a it's a it's a whole elaborate process. And for we in the New Patriotic Party, we started from the grassroots. Mm. So constituencies, everybody um, at the district level nominated their people. Mm. They got endorsed at that level. They came to the regional level where we had a regional minister who is going to work with them mm -hmm. as head committee chair, together with a panel of four, a lawyer and a few other people on the panel vetted them, went through their CVs, asked them questions, both um, on the governance side and also from the political side, because they are inevitably coming from the political stuff. appointees yes. the president, yes. Exactly. And then at the national level, mm -hmm. we've gone through all these processes so that we, we unearth competent, capable people who can run the affairs of the states. Because if you take a place like Tema Metro, for example, the MCE is not uh, the same as the MCE from even Tema West. Understood. Because my MC ran, um, has a whole regional police command under his under his um, his his watch. He has a, a customs. He has immigration. He has port health. Mm -hmm. He has an a BNI. Ha has other security installations. Sensitive because national it's tema because it's Tema, tema Metro. Mm -hmm. So all these factors um, um, play a role. Oh, no, but you're not so explaining to me why it's taken us this long. You know so, that. Uh, well, I'm just trying to uh, let you know that yeah, there's an elaborate process to get there, and then there's yeah. the first that time that we've that done that comes, that, that, comes yeah. to, that comes with it. <laughs> but all these factors yeah. have accounted for the, um, the delays because no, I'm in the past... No, let, 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 no, 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 no. Before, let me get there. seven months in. Did you not know you were going to win the election? Yes, you knew I was going to win the election, but... You were not confident. We have had... We have had problems in the past yeah. and in um, many of the reports that you have had internally we realized that the relationship between our uh, MCs and their PCs and also their activities on the ground have contributed to the loss of some of the seats that we, we lost in parliament okay, understood. and therefore we cannot just uh, uh, go back and repeat the same mistakes we are taking these steps so that we are able to mend yeah. these things and, right. prepare for and in the, the meantime, our country is suffering because no, the you are doing suffering. political... We, the country is not suffering because every MC, every MC that is at post is still at post. But Nobody why are we talking changed. about it? We don't have fault. Why are we, we talking about fault. it? Because the person who's sitting there is sitting there as a caretaker will therefore not have the impact, impact impetus 
or desire or even the funding to do anything the assemblies, for six, seven months. The assemblies are still running. You know Every them, assembly yeah. is running. Honorable and it should be able to run, in fact, it should be able to run without the MCE. What it should be able to do and what it does are two different things, and you know that as well. It is, they are running. Oh, my goodness. Honorable, They're not making any decisions. Honorable, come on. Yeah. They are running. Is it currently <laughs> licenses <laughs> and permits are not being signed? Who at the assembly <laughs> level has not been paid? <laughs> who, um, if you which say they've not been, no, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about them course. doing their work. Everybody's working without leader. Everybody, but, but we have leaders. We have leaders. The, we have leaders. If you say they are not leaders, you are, you are wrong. Question. Honorable, we have leaders. Okay. Okay. How do you work effectively so, without you measure head? that itself? So we're accounting for this because of these various issues. Mm. Yes. Many there, of them there, internal. I want you to know that there are several factors that we think. Time to make a change. For me, for me, ideally. We should elect our uh, our district chief executives in the as future. we try to do as before. We try to do, yes, want to go, to, is that yes, going to come back to parliament? It, it, it should Arab. come back. Right. It should come back. That may be it easy. should come back because maybe it's about time because we yes. are. Um, uh, it, it, it solves half of the problem. It, it's not going to be. <laughs> you think that's some of the problem? It solves okay. a lot of the problem. Yes. All right. Uh, there's a lot of them. God, what is the number now for those uh, uh, district chief executives? Two hundred and fifty-four. 254. F 54. Yeah. And after the census, there will be more. You know this. As yeah, we, we, yeah, there will be, there'll, 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 there'll be, a re, there'll be reviews. Yeah, and, uh, and and yeah. No, yeah. Tema is also a metropolitan. Tema, Tema is a metropolitan. 254 okay. plus 3. There you go. So, no, the metro. In all. Overall. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because it's um, Sekendi Takwad is also a metro. A metro. So, yeah, got that. so there are a few metros. So but the commercial centers are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or the bigger, let me say the, the bigger, bigger cities. Population yes. centers. Thank okay. You. All right, after, Nana. after the population census, there'll be a review. Most probably, there you go. It doesn't mean that it's going to be reviewed upwards. It can also be reviewed downwards uh, yeah. because, because your numbers the, have, have dropped. The, the <laughs> formula, no, the formula for re <laughs> see the formula for, for example, uh, creating constituencies and all that mm. is ninety plus ten, ninety percent and ten. Mm -hmm. So ninety percent population, ten percent landmass, mm. and we are. Uh, I mean, the sense. Uh, I cannot preempt what is there, but. From what they did last year, the samples that they did last year, there are some places where the populations are dropping right. because there's migration. Mm. a large rural urban migration, you know. And there are some constituencies today that it takes three hours to drive through mm. from one end to the other end mm. because the population is not there. But you have to account for that as well as um, the population as well and see how best the person can serve mm. the constituents or the district. So the review itself might not necessarily be. In addition, uh, upward. It, it can also be uh, a subtraction. The, the and the there are proposed, I mean, uh, proposals uh, in some quarters where we are seeing something coming down to almost 220. Oh, you okay. know, yeah, in some okay. places. But it means that it will affect some people politically. You know, it means that you have to merge some, some constituencies, you might have yeah. to merge some, some districts, districts mm. and all that. And mm. it would have Ramis its own effects because in those, some of those districts, you have two or three tribes who we find difficult to put together. You know, so there are so many things, so so many variables. So we'll get there after the census. We'll get there. Okay. But I hope that uh, I know that the local government minister is is fully in charge. He's very competent. <laughs> he he knows what to do, and then he'll get it done. The same okay. way he did the Honorable. the creation of the new uh, new regions. He would hey. get this one too done. Hey. <laughs> Defenders of the faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 now I, I invited you to talk, but uh, yeah, so you have a little of faith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, and what, any last comments you want to make? No, no I, d I don't think I have anything <laughs> that, uh, uh, useful to add there. Um, just to say, yes, we all hope that the census will, you know, a bit like the national identification exercise, will give us, you know, some quality data to begin to live with. Mm. I think our country is a lot more complex than we have um, assumed that it is to date. Right. Okay. Uh, and delays in appointments. Any major impact? <laughs> have you felt anything? Is your road not being swept? Uh, it's it's one of the things, if there had been uh, time to talk to Honourable Kajopong and Krumal on Monday about it, I'd have liked to have asked him whether he thought, for example, the three-month court process, uh, the, the election how petition, much it how much it, it of a knock-on effect it has had on government, but it has been remarkably slow, the formation of this government. Mm. Um, you know, um, one assumed that once the cabinet thing had been decided that all the other blocks would fall into place very place. quickly. But thank you, all the MMDCs, so all the government agencies and authorities Sorry. and decisions about, you know, their leadership and everybody is... Um, in, in, in that part of uh, our country is, is in limbo. 
um, I would hope that uh, uh, now, once it has been, there's a clearer picture of exactly how much this country can afford mm -hmm. to do in the coming financial year, okay. um, that things would proceed a lot more quickly. Yeah, so we look forward to that. Um, media budget review, we're told by uh, our man in Parliament, a uh, reporter from Parliament, our Honourable Norte, that it could be on the 29th. Can you appointed. afford his services? No, we're not. When it's free, it is... Uh, See what they say about pro, journalism. Pro bono. Mm. Then you can't demand yeah. standards. We want to say thanks to the three of them. Um, Maxwell, who today was not a peacekeeper at all. Ah, he was a <laughs> rabble rouser. <laughs> and <laughs> enjoying it. Yeah, exactly. I was a bit, uh, not disappointed, excited. <laughs> uh, Peter Prisma uh thanks as always, uh, president of the Liberty Institute for Liberty and Policy Innovation. And, of course, uh, a member of parliament, Honorable Hanson Norte, uh, MPP member of parliament for Tema Central, who is at pains to point out that Tema Central is a metro. <laughs> uh, it's not a small boy town. <laughs> uh -huh, on per off. Yeah. my metro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so right, just keep that in guys. mind. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, as always, thank you for your time and for your insights and Pleasure. for sharing your wisdoms.